Hey everybody, time for your May 2023 Ottawa real estate market update. If you've seen these before, you know the format. We're gonna run you through the stats for freehold homes and condos. And then at the end of the video, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned because I'm gonna give you two of my personal insights into the market. That's what we call a teaser. All right, so let's start with the stats. We'll put freehold stats up here. Boom, I'm gonna assume they're up. They're not actually there. Uh, I can't see them, there's nothing here, but Andrew is very talented, so he puts them on the screen. Anyways, in April, 2023, we sold 1,154 freehold homes total in Ottawa. Still a relatively low number. It's 30% more than we sold in February. That's to be, or February, 30% more than we sold in March, month that comes before April. That's to be expected. The number of sales always ramp up as we head into spring. However, historically, 1,154, still a pretty low number. Normally in April, we sell anywhere between 1,400 and 1,600 homes. So still fairly low sales volume overall. The average sale price of a freehold home in April was $748,000 give or take. Uh, that's a pretty big increase from March. That's a five and a half percent increase from the month of March where we were right around uh, 710,000. It's about 11% lower, however, than April of last year. So if you remember from the very height of the market last year, which was kind of March, April to the low, which was, you know, December, January, we lost about 20%, right? In terms of the average sale price, the average sale price dropped about 20%. We're now about 11%. So we've sort of recaptured 9% of that drop and, and, and prices have been trending up for the last two or three months. So good news if you're a seller. The spring market is definitely here. The weather is, is nice and warm. And so we're seeing a lot more listings come to, come to market. We're seeing a lot more activity in the market than we had seen in the previous months where we were just buried under snow, right? A couple more quick stats for you regarding freehold homes. On average, homes that sold in April took 27 days to sell. That's a little quicker than March where they were taken on average 34 days. And the homes that sold, sold for 98.9% of the list price. So they're selling for almost full price. That's about half a percent higher than what we were seeing in March as well. So very, very healthy numbers. Last but not least, inventory. If you remember inventory, measure of both supply and demand. Inventory levels came down again in April. Uh, April is a time where we usually see a lot of new mark, a lot of new listings hit the market because it's spring. And so I was kind of expecting inventory to go up a little, to be honest with you, but uh, surprised to see it went down. So we're sitting at 1.9 months of inventory right now, which is down from 2.3 months in March. Inventory has trended down pretty steadily throughout the year. We're definitely in a seller's market as far as inventory is concerned, as far as days on market, as far as list to sale price. So those are all really seller's market um, indicators. And one more indicator in April, we only took about 1,700 new listings, which is a very low number for April. Um, we took about 2,200 new listings in April last year, and even that was a low year. Normally, we're well into the kind of mid 2000s in terms of new listings in April. So very few new listings hitting the market, very low inventory, right? Which means that demand, is outpacing supply. All right, so that does it for freehold. Now let's move to condos. Put the stats up on the screen for you. Boom, wow. Believe it or not, again, there's nothing here. This is just air, but through the magic of TV, we can, anyways, all right. Uh, so when it comes to condos in April, very similar trends to freehold. We sold a total of 342 condo units in April in Ottawa. That's a low number for April historically, way down from last year where we sold 485. It is a 30% increase compared to March, but again, that's to be expected. The average sale price of a condo in April was $432,000. Now that jump from last month where we were averaging about 414,000, uh, but it is down about 8.5% from last April. So again, very similar trend to freehold. And condos that sold in April took on average 34 days to sell, a little quicker than they were selling last month, and they sold for 98.2% of the list price on average. That number is actually about flat with what we were seeing last month. Last but not least, condo inventory is also sitting at exactly 1.9 months, same as freehold. That's also a drop. We were at 2.2 months of inventory last month. So very similar trends. Uh, last but not least, we took 457 new condo listings in April. That much like freehold is a very low number. We expect to take much more new listings than that in the month of April in a typical year. So low inventory, more demand, less supply, not a whole lot of new listings. We're seeing that in freehold and in condo. All right. So now I'm going to give you two of my insights about the market right now. First, I'm just going to have some coffee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, insight number one, average selling price. So when I say that the average selling price for homes in Ottawa shot up in April compared to March, I know a lot of people are gonna roll their eyes and say, of course it does, it does that every year. Prices are always higher in the spring than in the winter. And there is some truth to that. 
However, I'm gonna challenge the conventional wisdom here a little bit. So the conventional wisdom has you believe that the sort of average price chart in Ottawa over the course of the year looks like this. Andrew, are you able to kind of trace my finger as I do this? Okay, technology. So a lot of people think that this is what the average price chart looks like in Ottawa every year, right? They think that prices start off really low in the early months of the year, January, February, sometimes March, and that they start to rise as we enter spring, that they peak in the spring, April, May, June, and then that they come down in summer, stay down, and then kind of see a little bump in the fall, and then come right back down towards the end of the year as we hit winter, right? And, and a lot of people tell, oh, it's like that every year, okay? Now, there is some truth to the first part of that. Yes, the average price in the month of January, February, and in any given year is almost always lower than what it'll be in the spring. Now, the reason for that is pretty simple mostly just because the inventory that's available in January and February is not very good. It's a lot of leftover stuff that was listed in the previous year that failed to sell and now it's just kind of a lot of stale listing, right? And then the other part to that is that a lot of people who are looking for flips or fixer upper type properties, they actually tend to do their shopping in the winter so that they can close in the spring, line up all of their, you know, their trades and their, their rentals or materials and start their, their work, right? Their, their fixing up of the fixer upper when the weather is nice and people can, you know, work outside. So low inventory. And then as we head into spring, a lot of, or sorry, low quality inventory, right? And then as we head into spring, a lot of newer, higher quality inventory starts. A lot of buyers who are looking for those forever homes or wow homes, they start shopping in the spring as well. So th this, this one, this, this thought that your house is, you know, worth more in the spring than it is in the winter is false. It's, it's really just the, the reason the average price is lower in the winter months than it is in the spring is because of inventory quality and also the type of buyers that are on the market at those different times, okay? So that's the first part. Now, the second part, right, of the conventional wisdom, which is that, oh, the prices peak in the spring and then they come down in summer and then they bump again in fall and then they come down in winter. That part's actually pretty false. Uh, if you look at the last 10 years or so, um, there, there are some years where the chart kind of looks like that, right, where there's a dip in the summer and, and bump and fall and whatever. But in most years, uh, that's not the case. It varies quite a bit year to year. You have a lot of years where we actually kind of go up into spring and then the, the market stays more or less flat, you know, a little bit of ebbing and flowing, but for the most part flat and then dips kind of back down again towards the, the, the winter months for the same reason, right? Low quality inventory, leftover inventory. And then there are other years where the market just keeps going up, right? It goes up in the spring and then it keeps going up in the summer and into the fall. And then, you know, again, always a little bit of a down, downward trend in winter. So your big takeaway from this insight should be that the average selling price of homes and more importantly, price trends, where prices are going, have to do with a lot more than just what the calendar says, right? If you're trying to base your, your predictions on where home prices are gonna go solely on what month of the year it is, you're going to be wrong more often than you're gonna be right. You'll probably be right in those winter months, right? They're probably gonna be start off a little lower than where they're gonna be in the spring. They're probably gonna end off a little lower in those you know November, December months. But everything that happens in the middle, right, which is where most of the sales happen, uh, varies from year to year. And whether prices trend up, down, or flat has a lot more to do with inventory levels, interest rates, unemployment or employment levels, and a whole number of other economic factors, new builds, all of that stuff. So I caution anyone who's you know looking at these videos and who's kind of looking at the market, who's seen the recent bump in prices and, and who says, you know what, I'm just gonna wait it out, I'm gonna sit it out, I'm gonna wait till summer, I'm gonna buy then because prices are gonna be lower then. If it was that easy, everyone would do it and no one would buy in spring, everyone would buy in summer or winter and then we wouldn't have a spring market, we'd have a winter market or a hot summer market or a hot fall market, right? So again, not that easy. There's a whole lot more that goes into it. Insight number two, let's talk about low sales volume. All right, so if you've been watching these videos for the last few months, you've heard me talk pretty much constantly like a, like a broken record about low sales volume, low sales volume, low sales volume. We got 10 year low, 15 year low number of sales month over month. Right now, this is, I'm not the only one report, reporting this. It's been, it's been talked about at nauseum in the medias and all over the place. And a lot of people will point to the low total number of sales as a sign that you know these high interest rates and lack of affordability have, have pushed a lot of buyers out of the market, right? That there's a very low buyer appetite, that there's no buyer enthusiasm in the market, right? The messaging is constantly, we just don't have enough buyers and that's why we're not seeing a lot of sales happen. And a lot of people will then take it a step further and they'll point to these low sales totals as this kind of forewarning that we're about to hit some type of major correction in housing prices or maybe even a crash. But is that what's really going on here? Sure, there's some truth to the fact that buyers are finding it more challenging, right, in this market with the prices where they are and with the interest rates, especially where they are to get into the market. 
However, remember the stats I gave you earlier, right? We've seen declining inventory levels month over month for the last little bit now. And we've also seen a really, really, really low number of new listings hitting the market for both condo and freehold compared to what we would expect in a typical April. Normally, I would expect the inventory levels to actually climb in April because there's so many new listings that tend to hit the market at this time of year, right? And it takes a while for them to get absorbed and for inventory levels to kind of stabilize. But we haven't seen that, right? We've seen a lower number of new listings and we've seen inventory levels drop once again. And to, to add to that, CMHC recently put out a report that said that we're expecting a very, very low number of new starts, which is a fancy CMHC term for new builds to hit the market in 2023. So what does all this tell me? What it tells me is that the problem is not so much that we don't have enough buyers right now on the market. The problem is that we don't have enough good stuff to sell them, right? The fact that inventory levels are declining, did I mention inventory levels are declining? The fact that they're declining is a sign that demand is outpacing supply and, and the gap is growing, right? There's the demand is increasing at a more rapid rate than, than we're providing supply. And so really the issue isn't that we don't have buyers. We have buyers. There are buyers out there. They're willing to buy. We're seeing bidding wars. We just can't find anything for them. There's just not enough good inventory. And, and yes, there are properties that are sitting. There's a lot of properties that are just sitting and they're not selling, but that happens in every market. The hottest market you've ever seen, there will always be properties that will be overpriced or that will have issues with them that make them very, very hard to sell. So this notion that I've seen a lot out there and that you've probably seen too, that we're gonna have some kind of like flood of inventory hit the market in the next little bit due to you know all of these people who bought at the height of the market and who now can't afford their homes when their mortgage renewals come up. First, I have my doubts that that's gonna happen. I think a lot of people will find a way to stay in their home rather than sell at a loss. But second, even if that happened, even if we did have a spike in inventory, let me tell you, we have a very long way to go just to kind of balance out the supply and demand, much less reverse it to where we have more supply than we have demand, right? So if, if the trends that we've seen develop over the past two or three months continue with regards to inventory, with regards to a lack of listings and with regards to buyer demand, I actually think we might see the market trend in the opposite direction. I think we might see prices continue to rise um, and we may like we're in a seller's market, but we may get into like a seller's market if things continue this way. So again, disclaimer, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what's gonna happen. There's a lot of different factors at play that could change things. But right now, we've got a good amount of data that are that is showing a pretty clear trend and that's there are more buyers than there are sellers out there. So if you're a seller and you've got a high quality product, good time to sell. If you're a buyer, you might end up having to compete with other buyers for the good stuff, or you might wanna change your strategy, consider something that's maybe a little bit more of a fixer upper if you're willing to do the work. Uh, those properties are still seeing a lot less activity than again, the, the prime kind of turnkey nine out of tens that we that are hitting the market. So that does it for my two insights. That's your, what is it, May, May 2023? Is it? Yeah, it is May. <laughs> That does it for your May 2023 Ottawa real estate market update. I hope you found this informative. If you have questions, if you'd like to chat about your own personal situation, if you just want a friend, feel free to book a, uh, a meeting with me using the Calendly link in the description. Uh, and uh, I'm Serge Papineau and I'll see you next month.